Welcome back to Yuri's Aquascaping. Today, we'll take you on a journey that starts with a blank nano-sized glass canvas and eventually evolves into a wild style untamed Sansui Iwagumi. Stay tuned through today's episode for a full step-by-step -step journey of how Yuri's constructs a minimalistic layout via the dry start method and then through careful maintenance and patience, fosters its evolution into a thriving, lush, self-sustaining ecosystem. Now let's dive in. Let's take a look at the equipment and materials Yuri uses in today's layout. This is the stunning UNS-5N. At four gallons or approximately 15 liters, this rimless aquarium has been carefully crafted using 91% clarity diamond glass. The low iron content provides uninterrupted crystal clear visibility. The 45 degree mirrored edges are bonded together using high performance German silicone, specifically designed for aquarium construction. At the time of filming, this was the first ultimate nature system tank to be imported into Europe. To light the tank, Yuri's has selected the Twinstar 360 ES RGB W LED light. Known for their affordable, high quality, Twinstar LEDs provide the full spectrum of light required for plants to thrive. Additionally, they help bring out the rich and vibrant colors of plants. This particular model features ultra clear acrylic legs suitable for rimless aquariums like this one. Once the materials are in place, Yuri's begins assembling the substrate system. The foundation of any planted aquascape is a quality, nutrient-rich substrate system. For this layout, and many of his others, Yuri's has selected Tropica Aquarium Soil, a complete bottom layer substrate that provides all the nutrients that plants need to thrive for the first six months of the aquascape's life. Eventually, liquid fertilizers will be added to supplement the nutrients in the tank. But for now, in conjunction with light and carbon, this substrate will provide everything the plants need to thrive and mature. Yuri uses a small paintbrush to move the substrate into place and ultimately create a slope way towards the back of the layout. This gives the illusion of increased depth and is a fantastic way for beginners to enhance the impact of their layouts. By sloping the substrate toward the back, we create forced perspective and we draw the viewer's eye from the front to the back of the tank. Strategic planting can be used to further enhance this illusion of increased depth. Once a substrate base layer of Tropica soil is in place, Yuri's begins adding the hardscape. The hardscape is arguably the most important aspect of an aquascape's construction. It provides the foundation or the backbone of the layout. With a carefully crafted hardscape, the rest will simply fall into place. For today's build, Yuri's has carefully selected several pieces of ADA Sansui stone, a beautiful volcanic rock characterized by its layered cracks. Today, Yuri's aims for a simple triangle layout. He places the largest stone in the substrate first. Next, Yuri's places the second supporting stone with special care to the direction of the striation on the rocks. By ensuring the natural lines point in the same direction, a zen-like harmony is achieved that aims to replicate rock formations found in nature. Yuri strategically places them at varying depths to further add shape, nuance, and realism to the layout. Once the third stone is in place, Yuri tops off the substrate with more of the Tropica Aquarium soil. This helps anchor the Sansui stones and provides a more natural aged look. Additional smaller rocks are added to the layout to provide stability and visual balance and support. When selecting hardscape materials for your layout, Yuri's highly recommends seeking out stones with similar characteristics, texture, and color. This ensures that the hardscape has a cohesive look to it that could naturally occur in the wild. When rock colors and textures are mixed, the aquascaper runs the risk of creating a layout that looks man-made and contrived. It is highly advised that new aquascapers get out and observe nature as much as possible to get a feel for the natural layout and arrangement of stones. This can then be replicated and modified for your at-home aquascapes. Now that the hardscape is in place, Yuri's tops off the substrate layer with the fine-grained Tropica Aquarium soil powder. 
This powder type variety of soil is especially suitable for foreground plants with very tiny roots. Additionally, the fine grain size aids in the establishment of scale in the layout. The finely textured powder makes the Sansui stones look larger than they actually are, enhancing the impact of the hardscape. Yuri's pours just enough aquarium soil powder to cover the substrate. Once again, a paintbrush is used to manipulate the soil. Yuri's further establishes the front to back and right to left slope, enhancing the previously established forced perspective. Note the triangular shape of this layout. This is a very simple design that can easily be replicated by beginners with many different varieties of hardscape. Next, Yuri's moves on to the planting. For this layout, he has selected a range of tissue culture plants from the Tropica 1-2 grow line. These plants are grown in a sterile lab environment and are guaranteed to be algae-free, snail-free, and pesticide-free, ensuring the best start for your aquascape. In order to prepare the plants, Yuri's drains the nutrient-rich liquid media from each cup and uses a plastic tray to divide the plants into individual portions. This allows him to carefully estimate how much planting material he has to work with and distribute the portions accordingly. Once the plants are prepared, Yuri's begins the foreground planting with Eleocaris acicularis mini, a low-growing grass-like carpeting plant. Yuri's prefers to plant as densely as possible in the beginning to ensure a successful start to the aquarium's life. Oftentimes, beginners make the mistake of not allocating enough budget to plants. The more plant mass present in the system at the very beginning, the smaller the chance nuisance algae has to establish and thrive. For this reason, Yuri's highly recommends the purchasing of as many healthy plants as your budget allows. Once the foreground is fully planted with the Eleocaris mini, Yuri's moves on to the midground planting. Next in is Helanthium tenilum green. Once again, Yuri's pinches off small portions from the rhizome of the plant and plants them as deep as possible, leaving just enough leaf exposed to uptake light. This ensures the plant will successfully root and have ample access to the nutrient-rich Tropica soil. Yuri's always pays very special attention to the mid-ground planting of his layouts. Oftentimes, beginners neglect the mid-ground and immediately transition from a low carpet to a high background wall. By carefully selecting appropriate mid-ground species, Yuri's ensures a natural transition of plant height and texture from foreground to mid-ground to background. Finally, Yuri's moves on to the background planting. For this, he has selected Helanthium quadricostatus, a taller plant suitable for nano backgrounds. As with the previous species, Yuri's breaks off small portions and spreads them out where desired, taking ample advantage of the dense portions that Tropica 1-2 grow cups provide. Now that the planting is finished, Yuri's prepares the layout for the dry start, a process that allows the plants to root, grow out, and carpet in their immersed form. The advantage of the dry start method, when compared to flooding the tank on day one, is that the aquascaper has a relatively maintenance-free experience in the beginning. Additionally, the plants can grow out and mature without the risk of algae. The number one reason that beginners give up on the hobby is nuisance algae. By allowing the plants to grow, mature, and thrive in their dry, immersed states, the aquascaper foregoes the algae battle and can relax and observe as the tank develops. In order to set up the tank for the dry start, Yuri sprays the plants and soil with reverse osmosis water, just enough so that legs of water begin stretching down into the soil. The number one cause for rotting, mold, and fungi during the dry start is excessive spraying of the soil. There shouldn't be any puddles or standing water in the tank. Yuri sprays just enough to keep the soil, plants, and air moist. To seal in the humidity, Yuri spreads cling wrap onto the top of the tank. A programmable timer is attached to the light and set to 12 hours per day. Yuri recommends removing the wrap once or twice a day and giving the plants a very light spray. Observe your plants as often as possible in the beginning and prevent them from drying out completely. Ten weeks later, we see that the plants have absolutely thrived under the dry start method. Note the very healthy Eleocaris runners, visible from the front pane of glass. This is a strong indication that the plant is happy and is readily propagating, a 
testament to quality lighting and soil. An unidentified terrestrial moss species has found its way onto the Sansui stone and is thriving in the humid environment. The two Helanthium species have spread out via their runners and have evolved into a densely packed, lush backdrop. The Helanthium tenellum green displays the stunning early stages of a flower, further indicating the presence of a healthy, biologically balanced system. While the plant growth during these 10 weeks has exceeded expectations, Yuri's does admit that at times, his maintenance and attention to the tank was lacking due to a busy and hectic travel schedule. Nonetheless, the plants show no signs of neglect, further supporting that when it comes to the dry start method, less is truly more. During periods where he could be home to maintain the scape, Yuri's missed the plants daily with reverse osmosis water, alternating every other day with Dua Wabikusa mist. While not a necessity, this pleasantly fragrant mist does provide additional nutrients to the plants and naturally repels some fungi and mold. One of the most important aspects to maintaining an immersed setup like this in the long term is the addition of biologically active organisms. For this reason, Yuris has added a population of tiny arthropods called springtails to feed on any mold and fungus present. Four weeks later, at the 14-week mark, Yuris decides to flood the tank. In order to distribute the water evenly and prevent the soil from being disturbed, Yuris carefully lays paper towels over the plants. He then slowly fills the tank with reverse osmosis water and remineralizes the water to GH5 using Dennerla Shrimp King minerals. Yuris prefers to use remineralized RO water in all of his and his clients' tanks to ensure optimal conditions that are fully under his control. Although many tap water sources provide suitable conditions, Yuris prefers to start with a blank slate of zero total dissolved solids, or TDS. He then adds minerals to the pure water to obtain the optimum conditions for the plants and livestock. The stunning stainless steel ADA Superjet ES350 is fitted to the tank for filtration. For a CO2 source, Yuris has fitted the Ultimate Nature Systems regulator with built-in solenoid to a refillable 20-pound stainless steel CO2 canister. Glass lily pipes distribute the water and the Aqua Rio Neo Diffuser distributes tiny CO2 bubbles. After flooding the tank, Yuris decides to enhance the impact of the layout by adding the tropical limited range Bucephalandra Ketagang. This iridescent dark green epiphyte provides color and texture contrast to the layout. For livestock, Yuris has added a shoal of celestial pearl danios, which add character and energy to the layout. An unknown species of wild-type Caradina shrimp have been added in as well. A large handful of horn nerite snails provide the cleanup crew needed to keep the young tank algae-free. Lastly, Yuri's adds a small goby to accent the livestock and keep the celestial pearl danios active and shoaling. While adorable and full of character, this later proves to be a mistake as the goby, nicknamed Steve by the community, ends up digging through the soil and uprooting the foreground plants. Six months into the aquascape's life, Yuri's performs a heavy maintenance session, much to Steve's dismay. Yuri's trims back the helanthium runners as they begin to dominate the layout and overshadow the hardscape. He siphons out the disturbed soil and replants some helanthium in the foreground to fill in the space. The glass and lily pipes are thoroughly cleaned, restoring their stunning clarity. While it is exciting to see an aquascape evolve and become lush and jungle-like, if you'd like to maintain the original look of the layout, Yuri's recommends regular trimming as a necessary part of the maintenance process. Nine months into the aquascape's life, we see that it has reached its stunning peak. At this point, it's ready for the final picture and can be deconstructed and rescaped. Yuri's prefers to rescape his tanks as often as possible in order to experiment and try new things. He believes regular rescaping allows him to push the boundaries of his craft and challenge his creativity. With regular trimming and water changes, the plants have filled in, creating a lush, vibrant tropical paradise. Philanthus fluitans, the red root floater, has been added from the limited range of tropical plants to accent the color and help absorb additional nutrients. Note the rich, saturated color of these floaters, enhanced by the twin star LED. Now in its peak condition, 
Yuri's moves the mature tank from his desk onto the stunning all-glass ADA cube cabinet, highlighting the beauty and simplicity of the layout. The German hand-manufactured MIG-A wood base supports the stand and provides a stable and stylish foundation. For more aquascaping content, tutorials, and tips, subscribe to the channel. To support the production costs and see more great content like this, consider joining the aquascaping family by becoming a member. Until next time, thank you for watching this episode of Yuri's Aquascaping.